Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be introducing some of the new array nodes introduced in the latest Notch 923 patch release. The aim of the array nodes is to bring together some existing features in Notch and expand on their capabilities, making it much easier to do some previously complex tasks. They are primarily transform array nodes, which can be used as sources for systems like cloners, but we've expanded on their capabilities to allow them to copy child nodes too. Let's start with a simple example. In this scene, I have a Shape 3D with a checkerboard texture, a camera, and some simple lighting. I'm going to add a mouse point array node and a Shape 3D. The mouse point array node is similar to the mouse picker, but designed to be used within array systems, making it great for starting out and testing ideas. With the Shape 3D connected as a child, now when I drag on the viewport, my Shape 3D appears, following the movement of my cursor. Do make sure that you don't have any nodes selected when you do this, or you may end up moving things accidentally and nothing will happen on screen. Now, it doesn't match my cursor movement one-to-one -one, though, and that's because I haven't set the bounds correctly on the mouse array node. If I go into the properties of the array node, I can change the bounds to fit my camera view. We can also change the easing of points as they are created, with options to scale up or down on creation, or fade with alpha blending. These properties are shared between all the array nodes. We're also not limited to geometry, like cloner systems are. Because we are creating copies of nodes and not instances, we can use lights too. If I swap my Shape 3D node out for a light node, you can see how the light now follows my mouse movements instead. It's not just lights. We've expanded this functionality for particles and fields. Both emitters and effectors for both of these systems can be controlled by arrays too. Here's a particle scene I made earlier. It's a fairly simple setup. I'm using a fractal noise node and an image emitter to put particles into the scene, and then an image effector to move them around based on the movement of the fractal noise. A fluid flip effector keeps the motion moving, and the point renderer renders the particles to screen. Finally, the particles moved quite quickly, so I had a time stretch node to slow the system down a bit without having to change all the individual options on the properties again. So, how could I apply the array nodes to this project? Let's start by adding a mouse point array and a vortex effector. The vortex effector moves particles around a central axis set by its rotation, and I think this will make a good start for interactivity here. I'll then set the mouse point array the same way as before, and reduce the vortex effector's radius so it doesn't affect the rest of the scene too much. Now as I drag around the scene, the vortex effector pushes around the particles. This is nice, but what if I wanted to add TUIO control, or Windows Touch support to the scene? Well, rather than creating duplicate graphs for each input type, Let's use the array copy node. This node will copy the transform inputs from the various array sources and combine them into a single array. I'll disconnect the mouse array node and connect the array copy node in its place. Then connect the mouse array to the array sources input. Quick test and we can see nothing has changed and our system still works. Windows Touch would work just by connecting the Windows Touch Array node to the same array source. But Tuyo can take a little more setup, so let's look at that. Tuyo is a protocol for touch screens, which can allow you to take touch inputs from an iOS or Android device and use it to control properties in other tools. In this case, I'd like to use my iPad to control the particle system along with my mouse, so let's set that up. To get Tuio to function, I need to go into the Project Settings and select the Protocols tab and enable Tuio. Then, in the app of my choosing, I need to go to the host IP and type in the IP address of the computer I'm using. This is easiest found through the command prompt and typing in ipconfig. It's important to make sure that both the Notch machine and the Tuio app, in my case, Tuio Pad for the iPad, are on the same network, otherwise they won't be able to find each other. 
I can now add the Tuio array node to my node graph and connect it along with my mouse point array. Now that it works, we just need to set the bounds so they match the screen area again, so I'll adjust that now. If you aren't sure your Tuio connection is working, you can also enable the connection monitor in the Windows menu and check to see that the Tuio data is coming through. Now that Tuio works, let's finish off this effect. The vortex effector is spreading the particles out too thin, so I'm going to add a primitive emitter to follow the array positions and fill in some of the extra space. By default, it emits white particles, so I'm going to add a color ramp input from the fractal noise node and set the color selection mode to random. I'll also reduce its size so that it's concentrated just on the array positions. Now, I want to create some sort of halo around the particles so that when you interact with the particles, it's more clear where the input is. So I'm going to add a primitive effector. This node moves particles based on various primitive shapes, but in this case, I can stick with a sphere. I'll also adjust the size to be much smaller and reduce its inner radius too. Lastly, I'll increase the velocity weight so the particles get caught in the ring and stay there briefly. And I think that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.